You can't get out of it, Dave. We already know. Oh, God. Oh, God. There's no way you're getting out of this one. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
grace this weekend. Oh, 
deceive us and try and get us to say what's the use, but I'm going to tell you what's the use. There's a God in heaven that loves us and cares for us. This world does not rule who I serve. Amen. 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 Right. I hope you're the same way. Uh, I was thinking about prayer this week, and I was thinking about sometimes whenever we pray, that we say we pray with faith. We say we pray with faith believing. But I, I want to use this scripture here and prove to you that we're sort of like this sometimes. So we pray, but we pray amiss because we don't really believe that God's going to answer our prayers a lot of times. We say that we're just going to pray and and we look for a, a doctor or a, a look for a loan or we look for uh, a credit card or we look for something else to take care of our needs more so than we do God. But you know, God is that prayer answering God and he's the one that loves us and cares for us. He's the one that took care of Peter here and, uh, in this uh, situation that Peter was in. At this time, they were killing uh, the disciples and and they were trying to destroy them. And, uh, you know, people are still trying to kill the disciples of Christ, whether you know it or not. And it's even getting worse today. Uh, they despise us, just like Brother Dave was talking about these other uh, Honduras where they're trying to kill and uh, destroy. And uh, because they are Christians and they're wanting a million dollars just begging for money, uh, I understand those lives are there and we need to get those lives freed up. But then again, uh, who are we to? Send a million dollars to back up. Oh, is it 17 million? Mm -hmm. 17 million. For a drug lord or something like this to back up the things they're doing. So I don't know. Uh, God knows what we need, when we need it, where we need it. But whenever I look at this scripture here, a lot of times whenever we're down on our knees praying, uh, we're praying amiss because we don't believe that God's going to answer a prayer. Uh, we think God's going to answer it in the way that we pray. And I've said this a couple services now. And this is what brought me up to this scripture whenever I said that. I, I go back a lot of times and I think over what I've said and God has given me because a lot of times you don't know what you're, you know, what you're going to say and God will give you uh, things to say. And then you go back and you think about it and you think, well, you know, that's what God's trying to say here is a lot of times whenever we pray, we expect something, but we don't expect the greatness of God. Uh, we're, we're serving a God that is greater than what we'll, we try to limit him. We try to say, well, he can only do this or he can only do that. God's omnipotent. He can do anything. Mm -hmm. And he can do it with each individual person because he is omnipotent. That's right. Uh, he can do it with you and be doing it with me at the same time. And uh, that's a lot of things we don't look at a lot of times. The devil can't do that. The devil can only mess with one person at a time. He's not right. like him. He, he can only do one person at a time. So if the devil's messing with you, he's not messing with somebody else. <laughs> Now, he does have some imps that works with him. That's right. Just like, uh, you know, everything else. And some of those imps sometimes work on us. But anyway, let's read some scripture here in verse uh, chapter 12 of uh, Acts. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarters, quarions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. A great number of soldiers here is put over Peter, one man. Sometimes I believe that the king believed that the prayers of the people more than the people believed their own prayers. Because they had probably, maybe not at this time, but probably at this time, they had probably had already heard how Paul and Silas was in the middle of a prison and the walls shook and the things happened there. They had heard of how God had uh, liberated the people through uh, the day of Pentecost and how that whenever Peter walked down the streets, the even the shadow that cast it upon the people that they were made whole. And if we look at those things, we see that God's able to bless us and take care of us and, and honor us. But whenever we pray, we pray a lot of times and we say, God, I need this, or God, I need that, or mm -hmm. God, do this for me, or God, bless me this way. I don't know how the people were praying at this time. I don't know exactly what they were praying. But as we go along, I believe you're going to find that they were praying and they were praying for God to answer their prayer 
in their way, not the way God answers prayer. That's right. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So the church was concerned about Peter. They loved Peter. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, now listen. In our minds, and which I think we, and whenever we pray, our minds are feeble. We don't realize how great God is. We don't realize how God can bless. We don't realize what God can do. Uh, we take our little feeble minds sometimes and we say, uh, well, you know, God, he could get a hold of the king and something could happen with the king. They could pass judgment and let Peter loose. God can overstep everything. He's God. He could have walked in, or not even had to walk in. He could have spoke the word from heaven, and everybody in the prison would have died. Mm -hmm. That's God. You see, but whenever we pray, we're praying the little man. Talking about myself here this morning. The little man prayer. Well, God could do this, or God could do that. Mm -hmm. But do you think God's going to send in an angel? Do you really think that God's going to... Send in an angel to deliver his man? Well, I know he will. God's going to send us whatever we need in the hour that we need it because Amen. he loves us. That's right. But the problem is, whenever we're praying, we're thinking small. We're thinking, well, God could do this for our church, or God could do this for our billfold. God could do this for our home. God could do that. But we're not saying, God, in your own way, the way, God, you want to answer this prayer. God, I give it into thy hands. God, you handle it the way it needs to be handled. And, and you say, well, maybe that's the way the church is praying. Well, it don't prove out that way as we go along here. You're going to find out. It proves out that they really thought that God was going to handle it in a small way. But we're serving a big God that handles it in a big way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've got to get back to. We're, our God's omnipotent. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to the, all the other graves and all the other places where the where there was people laid and and whenever they died, uh, they called them God. Whenever you get there, if ain't nobody moved them, you're going to still find the bones. You're going to still find some fingernails. You're going to still find some hair. Because those people are still there. But whenever they got to the tomb of Jesus, even on the third day, yeah. praise God, it, well, he wasn't there. Yeah. His bones were rolled away. Yeah. He was yeah. Yeah. Home. And that's the part we got to get to. we got to realize that our God is great. Yes, he is. Amen. He's wonderful. He's omnipotent. Yes, he is. He's greater than what this world has to offer. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. He didn't even have to touch them. They just fell off. God's word. God's word makes the difference. Amen. God's word. You say, Brother Ken, those prayers of those saints was making a difference. In a lot of ways, I think God was letting these people know you're praying the little simple prayer. <laughs> you're praying a little simple prayer. But praise God, I'm a great God. Yes. I believe we're here in this morning in a church that we sometimes we look at it and we pray a little simple prayer. Uh, we're saying, well, God, you could, or, or if you would, or, or God, you can. And what we need to do is say, God, I commend it into thy hands. Right. God, it's your problem. It's not mine anymore because I can't handle it. And right. then we need to look for the answer that God gives us. Here he's sending an angel. Peter bound in between the soldiers and him sleeping and the angel has to wake him up. Mine. And he went out. Wait a minute. He said, and the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garments about thee and follow me. Now, they're doing all this, and here's the people. I mean, you know, the soldiers are still here, but God has come down, and he's called the calm to come upon them where they're still asleep. They don't hear these things. They don't see these things because God's in charge. God's great. Yes, he and we've got to get to that point in our life whenever we've got problems, whenever things are going wrong. We've got to remember that we are not the ones that have the answers. And I think sometimes whenever we pray, we think we've got the answer. God. Send me to the right doctor that can do this. 
God, send me to the right person that can help me with this. God, give me the right medicine. And what we need to be praying is, God, this is your problem as well as right. it is mine. Amen. And God, I commit it into thy hands. That's right. Amen. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. In other words, this gate just swung open. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, it just swung open. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I can go to the hospital and the door's open for me, but it ain't because of the name of Jesus, I promise you that. <laughs> Some man put an eye on me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Open to them of his own accord, and they went out and passed on through the one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. The angel's work was done, so he went on about his business. Now listen to this. This is where we're going to get down to. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod. And from all expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Now listen, these people are in the house and they're praying for Peter to get loose. They're in the house expecting God to do something that Peter will be able to get out of prison. Are they really there? Are they really expecting God to do the work? Are they praying because Peter's in bondage and they don't want him killed? I don't know how they were praying. But if we read on here a little bit, we find out that they weren't expecting Peter to be delivered. That's right. They were expecting other things to happen. And when he had considered, uh, wait a minute, and, uh, and as Peter knocked, uh, wait a minute. You're right. Yep. I am 13. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. something that wasn't true. Mm -hmm. And I think we're the same way sometimes whenever we pray. We think, well, God could do this, or God could do that, but will God do this? And if we say we believe in faith, the Bible says if you've got the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, which is the smallest herb, and it's not like the mustard seed we have here today either. It's smaller than that. Their mustard seed was real, just a, just a pinpoint, small little thing. But it says it can grow where a bird can build a nest in the top of it. And I believe that our faith is very small. I hate to say it, but I believe it is. Yeah. I believe we're sort of like Rhoda here. We hear the voice, but God, I don't know whether you've done this or not. God, we're in the house and we're all praying. We're all talking about Peter and we're all worried about Peter. And Peter's standing at the gate hollering, let me in. And I run back in the house. You say, well, it was a little young girl and she had got upset. She should have had faith. Mm -hmm. You and I should have faith. You and I should be able to believe. A lot of times whenever God does something, it's almost like, how did God do that? How did God do this? Man, if you, you've seen somebody raised from the dead, then you know that God is real. Amen. I've seen that before. I know what it means. I know what it looks like. I know how it works. I've seen that before. 
I've seen people healed before. I've seen people blessed before. In an instant, in just a twinkling of an eye. I've seen God honor them and, and lift them up in just a moment. Because of their faith. We've got to have faith in this God. We've got to have faith in this Lord. But our problem is we're sort of like Rhoda. <laughs> God, did you really do this? God, is this you? I think in a lot of ways we're the same way. Whenever we pray something, we're expecting God to do little. But God's a great God, and he does great. And we need to remember that. We need to trust God that way. Listen to this. <clears throat> And when she knew Peter's voice and she opened not the gate for the gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. Wait a minute. These are the people in the house that are praying for Peter to be loose. And now they think she's crazy. God's doing exactly what, she's, what they're asking them to do. And they thank God that this girl's crazy. This girl, it can't be true. What are you in there praying for? You're not expecting anything. What are you in there asking for? You're not expecting God to do it. Are we the same way a lot of times? We pray and we don't expect God to do it. We don't expect God to take care of it. We're the same way. You can't look down to teach people because we pray the same prayer sometimes. We'll pray, but before we get back to the door, we say, well, God can't do that. God won't do this, or God won't do that. And what we need to do is whenever we come to an altar of prayer and we lay it on the altar, then we, see, we need to say, God, it's your problem. It's not mine anymore because, God, you said you love me and you said you'd take care of me, so I commend this problem into thy hands, Amen. and I trust you for an answer, Lord. That's right. And God will do it for us, just like he did for Peter, just like he did here. Did God hear these people's prayer? I believe he did. Mm -hmm. But he didn't answer it the way they wanted it answered. He's not going to answer your prayer the way you want it answered. Sometimes it's going to be a great revelation. Other times it's just a subtle something that takes place. But we need to learn to trust God for the answers that he gives. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. <laughs> In the house, praying and seeking God's face for God to answer prayer. And whenever Peter's standing there, they astonished. Are we not the same way? Are we not exactly the same way? <laughs> Some of you go think I'm crazy. I was asking God for an answer one time. And I told the Lord, I said, I'm going to need a great answer on this prayer that I'm praying because I can't take something simple on this prayer because I said, Lord, I said, Lord, I wouldn't do this thing. And now it's presented before me and I feel like I should do it. And God, I need you to change my mind with a great vision. And I said, I was, at, I was down at the house mowing on the lawn. And I was out there and I spun around. Whenever I spun around, I saw a vision. And some of you are going to think I'm crazy. But I saw a vision of these men coming towards me. They had white hair. They had a long white beard. They were dressed in gold robes and red robes and yellow. I mean, I don't know what all color robes, but all of them were just shining. They looked like they had jewels from the top to the bottom. But every one of them was just beautiful. It looked like they had white around the neck and come down the front. And they looked just like a, a giant load of kings coming right towards me. And uh, whenever I was mowing up towards them, I, I raised up and I seen this vision. It was just like piles of them coming right towards me. It's right out in front of my barn. Where was that? And you say, Brother Ken, uh, have you seen a vision like this in front of your barn? I sure am. And whenever I saw that, it scared me. I'm on my lawnmower and I'm praying. I'm seeking God's face. And whenever God's giving my answer, it scared me. You say, Brother Ken, I wouldn't admit that. Well, it did. I'd never seen nothing like it in my life. I felt like if I'd have kept going, I'd have run over these men. So I whooped the lawnmower around whenever I did. God said, there was your vision. Oh, no, I want to see it again. So I whooped the lawnmower back around. It's gone. I feel like I was the same way as these people here. 
I was asking God for something. I was asking God to help me with something. I was asking God to bless me with something. God was giving me a vision, and in the middle of that vision, I let the devil scare me, and I didn't get to see the whole thing of them people walking to me. I felt like, you know, if I would have just kept looking, maybe they would have walked and laid hands on me, I don't know, or maybe they would have just given me the strength that I needed, but you know what? We let the devil cheat us out of some of our blessings, and we don't honor God. We pray and we ask God for a blessing. God, let the Holy Ghost fall on me! And then whenever the Lord comes into the house, and you're sitting there, and, and you don't want to move, you don't want to do nothing, you just want to sit there with your arms folded, and the Holy Ghost is moving, that ain't no way to get the Holy Ghost to move. The way to get the Holy Ghost to move is to get hungry and let that hunger get inside of you and let the hunger move among the other people. You say, Brother Ken, I don't understand the Holy Ghost, so therefore I ain't going to do nothing about the Holy Ghost. I don't understand the Holy Ghost, but I know the Holy Ghost is real and I know the power Amen. of God is real and we are praying and asking God to give us strength and, and power in these last days and we need the Holy Ghost anointing of God to give us that strength and if you don't want that strength, then praise God. You pray your pastor gets it because he wants it. I want Amen. all the anointing I can possibly have because there's healing, there's blessings in that, but I'm going to tell you right now, we need to trust God whenever we pray. I don't know how God's going to answer your prayer, but my God will come to your rescue and he will bless you Amen. if you'll only trust him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be God. Because we're serving that living God. But he beckoned unto them with a hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things to, unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. You see, God is going to answer your prayer because he loves you. But it might not be the way you think it's going to be answered. I was asking for a vision, and I thought I was going to get a vision of something happening that don't normally happen. I thought it might be. I was looking for something simple, and here God sends me all these men of God to show me that he's in my life and he's blessing me. You can believe whatever you want to believe. You can trust God. You can go out here and say, Brother Ken didn't see that vision. It's not true. You can go out here and say, Peter didn't walk out of a jail where his hands were locked in two chains. But I can tell you this, our God is real. Yeah. And whenever we pray, we need to pray, God, you answer this prayer in your way, not in mine. We need to pray, God, you bless me in your way, not in mine. God, if you want the Holy Ghost to move, then God, help me to make the first step. Yeah. That's what God asked us for, right. us to make the first step. Amen. And then he'll make the rest. Mm -hmm. If we're going to ever be what God wants us to be, then we're going to have to learn that God's greater than we are. We're just the little peons to God. Right. God's the great God. God's the God that's got our answers. God's the God that loves us. If you're here this morning, and you've been praying your prayer, and you feel like God hadn't answered the prayer that you've been praying, start praying and say, God, your will be done in this prayer. God, no matter what it is, I'll accept it. If God can break two chains off of a man's hands, if God can cause all the soldiers to be in such a deep sleep that none of them awake, this angel told Peter, he said, you would think they would have run out of there. He didn't, did he? He said, get your, get your clothes. Get your sandwich, Peter. We ain't in no hurry. My God's in charge. Yeah. <laughs> you see, the world right now thinks they're in charge of America. Yes. They think they're in charge of the rest of the world. They think, oh, we've got everything in our hands. Everything's heading in our direction. There's a God in heaven got the right answer. And if we'll put our trust into his hands and we'll say, God, I don't have the answers. God, I don't know which way to turn. But God, let me turn to you. And then believe. See if they would have really believed. Whenever 
I seen that woman raised from the dead, in my mind, all I could see was this church here going down. Because we let a woman die on our pews before we moved into this church. A week before we moved here is whenever she died on the pew. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't want to go into another church with death. But I won't go into it with life. And God raised her from the dead. He can do it for her. He can do it for us. If your home seems like it's dead, if your life seems like it's dead, trust God. Put your head into His hands. Believe in Him. He's a God that answers my fire. You don't believe that? Ask Elijah on the hillside with all the bells in. They had cut their sin, called upon their God. And Elijah sat over on the side over there and poured all that barrel of water upon that bowl, upon that ground. Cried out to God. And the fire came down from heaven.
got saved in prison, and he was a living testimony to so many people. And I think if we could pray to have the kind of faith he had, we wouldn't see so much of God's movement in the church. Amen. When he was in prison, he had a dream that he was jumped and attacked by two different prisoners. And God said in the dream, self-defense only, and showed him some moves to defend himself. Well, the morning when he woke up, he was attacked by those two prisoners. He used the same exact moves, and they fled, but they busted his jaw. He broke his jaw. And he knew that by Jesus' stripes we were healed. So he stood on 1 Peter 2.24. And no matter how much the pain hurt to be speaking, he spoke, I am well in Jesus' name. And instead of waiting to see the healing, he started praising for the healing. By the time those guards got into the hospital, the doctor said, I don't know why you brought this man here. All I see is a hairline fracture from years ago. That's the kind of faith that we have already. We just need to stop looking at what we see and start looking at what God says. Amen.
Dear Heavenly Father, I love you and I praise you today, God. God, I thank you for each and every person that's here, God. Bless them, Lord, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I rebuke the devil with all his powers that comes against us. Stand on the loving God and the blessed God, knowing, Lord, that you're going to deliver us in these last days. God, I speak peace to each and every one. There be one here today, Lord, that's not walking close to you, God. I pray, God, that you can beat their hearts. Draw them nigh unto you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Shake hands and be friendly. Don't forget to go out to the fellowship.